-hmm. Okay. Hello, everyone. I'm just so happy to be. My name is from Taiwan. Say hello. Who participate and that today I'll be sharing the cancer causing food with the. I just heard that we have so many friends from Africa. And also, perhaps we have some friends from Australia, Myanmar, because I have oh. shared with all my friends around the globe. Sing oh. Fu. Okay. Right. So usually, um, when people has different disease or pain, severe pain or cancer. They usually, I often hear them asking the question, why? Why has cancer come to me? And this one side, we, I had a guest that come to a house to stay with us for uh, quite some time. And I, this one time I was so surprised that she sat at the table and then she, all of a sudden she was so sad and then she burst out with words like, why am I so bad luck? Why is this cancer happening to me? So many others, but why cancer choose me? So what about the friends that we know? Perhaps we all um, heard that they asking those kind of questions. But do you know that disease never come without a cause? Cancer never comes to you without a reason. Unless you invite cancers or other diseases by your wrong healthy lifestyle habits, like the habits of eating, drinking, dressing, working, even thinking can be wrong. So as we go through today's our topic, the cancer causing food, I would like to invite everybody, even including myself, we need to continue to think and examine our lifestyles habit to see if we, if we anyway we are preparing the way for disease to see if we are inviting cancer disease to come to our house this body so today i'll be um sharing with people with you uh, a very short nutrient introduction and also cancer causing foods and also most important if we're talking about cancer causing food so what is the solution what is the remedy for it so be expected and be excited, the anti-cancer foods. Um, for the functions or nutrients, they are the food that we eat contain nutrients. And those nutrients are substances required by our body to perform the basic functions. And the nutrient must uh, obtain, we must have it from our diet because we cannot make them just with our body. And a nutrient have one or more of the three basic functions. The basic is provide energy and they contribute to the body structures and process in the body. So those are, there are six groups of nutrients required by the body. And those are the carbohydrates, fat, protein, mineral, vitamin, and water. Um, I would say that at the very beginning, at least probably 30, 40 years ago, water is not included in this, even fiber. But here today, water and fiber are so important. Carbohydrates that provide the main source of energy for the body and that for many for the formation of the cell. And fats, it is provide a stored energy for the body. And the function, the fat, nowadays, if you hear that in the health market, people say, oh, fat is not good. Don't eat too much fat. But actually, we need fat. And fat is so important for your cell membranes. So we do need fat, but good fats. They are very important for the hormone, not only the, um, the energy, but the hormone regulation and body temperature. Protein. It is very necessary for formation, cell preparation, and hormone and enzyme production. Vitamins and, okay, the previous three, those are the, ma the macro uh, nutrients. They provide calories. For example, carbohydrate, one gram of carbohydrate usually provides four calories, the same. But carbohydrate, um, the fat, usually just one gram of fat 
it provides nine calories. So people who are eating a lot more fat, they usually have obesity or overweight, overweight problem. But when we come to the micronutrient, the minerals or vitamin, they do, uh, we do not count them for the calorie, but they are very essential. We cannot live without them. They regulate the body process, normal body functions, and those vitamins um, like um, vitamin A, C, D, E, K, B complex, and the mineral, they like calcium, iron, magnesium, a um, whole lot of them, they are very important to regular, um, to uh, regulate our body process and normal body functions. Water. Yesterday we heard about, we learned about the importance of water because it is so essential to transport in, um, all those nutrients that we have eaten to be able to uh, distribute them to our body, the cells need, but also to remove the toxin, the waste out of our body. And also it's so important for our temperature maintenance. That's why yesterday we also learned about the hydrotherapy. Hydrotherapy is also to manipulate the temperature in our body and into for its um, the, the, um, the function that you would like to achieve. All right, so now we come to the second part, the top cancer causing food that people enjoy and people enjoy and love to eat that and prepare the way for disease to happen. So what are they? And I'm going to go um, for those food in a very simple way. We're not going to spend lots of time because they are more than what we can learn. And just today's topic, it's for to give you awareness and for you uh, to create uh, to create a curiosity even to motivate you to find out more and as we learn more and we can share with other people all right the processed meat according to iarc the international research center for the cancer in 2015 they found that uh, the processed meat was classified as the group one to the human being. And the consumption of processed meat and cause, especially colon cancer, this is undeniable fact, evidence. The also, um, the second group, I'm not so sure if you can see my click here, but the red meat also, it is classified as the um, group A, uh, say the second group that is um, cause cancer. The red meat or the poor beef lamb, anything that is red with the blood in it, those are all classified in the red meat. Bacon is one of the processed meat that is very, that people enjoy eating, but perhaps that's in more Western, but maybe that in Asia that is sausage or smoke, uh, smoking, uh, smoked meat, pork. But th uh, those are all the same in the, ba in the bacon pro um, category. They contains nitrous, and um, nitrous are the um, the salt from the chemical or natural sources that are added to the meat in order to preserve it for a long time. And um, those nitrous usually come as we come in to our body. They form, they can form carcinogen or carcinet, um, carcinogenic compounds, and that could cause the um, could damage the DNA, but you you see that all the processed meat usually they are red meat, that pork or beef, and they are deep fried, and they have a lot of iron. And those iron actually too much of a certain food protein or iron in our body. Our body is not designed in that way to metabolize like them, and it's too much. It's going to cause problem. Hot dog and lunch meat is the same. It has a lot of um, coloring agent. It's not, hot dog is not a meat. It's not a real meat, it's a fat one. A fake one is not real. The color is because of coloring agent and a lot of um, chemical addictive, preservative and chemical seasoning. So the study um, conducted by the report from the research of intake of processed meat will increase 80% of the colon cancer. And what does that tell you? The more you eat, the higher colon cancer risk. So how much is 50 grams 
of processed meat. It's probably that one or a quarter cup, a quarter of hot dog, or 60 thin slices of ham. Ham is made of the um, the pork, or two, almost like three slices of bacon. And I see that people eating at restaurant. Um, I observe them. They eat more than just one and a quarter hot dog, or they eat more than just three slices of bacon for a breakfast. They eat more than that. And remember, this is definitely related to cancer. Overheat food, overheated um, cooking at high temperature, like grilling, frying, barbecuing, sauteing, even stir fry, a Chinese Asian style of deep fry. I see that many Asian culture they love. So that stir fry in Asia, Chinese. And this is, um, quite dangerous because it creates the carcinogenic substances that HA and AG that usually lead to the inflammation and then damage the DNA of your cell. And that is increased um, the chance of getting cancer and other diseases. Of course, this is um, a way of um, a method of cooking. It causes the problem. Can you imagine the fat in this and the meat, the quality of the meat and the seasoning, the sugar, the salt, all of it is on top of it. Another example that salted oil fry, um, fry food, uh, fry fish, um, this will cause cardiovascular disease, cancer. And usually those kind of processed food, salted, during the process of um, that during the process, the, um, a lot of nutrients are really um, taken, removed, and not much left. Barbecuing, the charcoal grill food that put, usually um, they could load a, a burden for the kidney and also your liver. The study have found that with just one chicken leg, it is just like you have smoked 60 cigarettes. So how long does that how long does that take you to eat a chicken leg? Probably like five minutes. People enjoy um, the steak or beef. Probably like a few minutes, but sixty cigarettes. How probably quite some times, right? But so simple of eating chicken leg, but you are smoke so much. Okay. Can everybody still hear me? I cannot hear people. Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, yeah okay. go ahead. I will continue. Because, yes. Um, the camp yes, food. I can hear you. Okay, thank you, because yeah, my kind of stuff. Thank you. The camp food is yes. processed food. Canned beef. I know that before I live in the Philippines, um, they have a habit and corn, pea, tomato, soup, and beans because nowadays people are busy. So people usually just take it from the grocery store, open it up, and eat it. It's convenient, but do you know that um, they usually, those process, or those canned food, during the process, a lot, destroy a lot of vitamins in fruits and vegetables. Even like um, the canned pineapple, not much nutrient left, but high sugar. Uh, even addictive, that like artificial flavor for the pineapple. It's not, maybe the flavor is not really pineapple, it's just already, it's added in. So the hidden sugar and salt and oil that added in the canned food, usually that are high, high calorie food and little nutrients. Mm, okay, fast food, many preservatives and addicts, um, additives added in it. Not much chicken, chicken little. Um, because this one study they found that um, from two main chain of the uh, fast food in US, they found the chicken nuggets actually only 40 to 50% real meat. And the rest of it is artificial mixture of organs or nerve or bones. Can you imagine what you were eating? Artificial mixture of the chicken parts. So those food are high rich, um, high calorie, salt, sugar, and fat. And that's not a wise, that's not a healthy choice. Processed food, you know that there's no problem with tomato. I love 
uh, tomato, I mean, this is not tomato, potato, or even sweet potato, they are so nice. There's no problem with a fresh one, you cook them, you eat them at home. At McDonald's, according to the, um, um, the study, they found that 7% of the soybean oil and 93 beef oil they have been used to fry the, um, the french fries. But then later on, because beef oil, nowadays animal oil is much more expensive. And vegetable oil, artificial oil, is much cheaper. So what do they do? They replace that with vegetable oil and artificial flavor of the beef must add it to make that french fry smells good and taste good. Okay. Um, when starch of food cooked at the 120 to 150 Celsius degree, a compound called acrylamine um, will form. And this is causing, this is really a, a damage to your body, your DNA. It's not good at all. Any carbohydrate food and low fat and carbohydrate usually will, um, will turn to this um, carcinogenic substances as you eat them and eating a lot of fried food especially carbohydrate fried food or the snack that increase your risk of the type or obesity um, so and they cause a lot of inflammation right dairy dairy that um, study they found that high dairy consumption will increase the risk of prostate cancer and breast cancer, and also definitely other cancer. It's just not found yet, but it is there. And dairy food usually we can see is a milk, cheese, and yogurt. Um, let's come to this. You know that there's a very late, um, a new study done by Romalinda in 2020. And I, when I saw the study, this is just so good. And I can share this with you guys. Women in the study, they found that people who can who just take a quarter cup to one uh, one third cup of daily, I mean cow milk, dairy milk, a day that will increase the breast cancer by thirty percent. Drinking one cup a day increase fifty percent of breast cancer risk. So those people who are at a high risk of breast cancer, dairy milk that you were drinking. But what about people who are drinking more than just one cup? Uh, one cup is two or three. You will go up to high as like 80% of breast cancer risk. But then some people say, well, you know that um, soy milk, it is, the study have found that soy milk, it is very protective for women, um, even the processed cancer, even in you know, heart disease. It's play a protective role in our body, especially with breast cancer prevention. But do you know that but in this study, the Romanina study, they found that what about us look at the people who are drinking, okay, we have found that dairy milk increased cancer risk. But what about there are some group of people, they, they drink dairy milk, cow milk, it is milk, protect them from breast cancer because of the dairy milk? The answer is no. The answer is no. And why is that? Drinking cow milk, and the soy milk, that when the soy milk will not protect you from the breast cancer because of the cow milk. Because this cow milk, dairy milk, it has the estrogen hormone. Because the most of the cow, they can produce so much milk. They are pregnant or they are breastfeeding their baby cow. So it has a lot of estrogen hormone and that, you know the breast cancer is mainly because of the estrogen that is too much in the body. So in the intake and also this dairy and animal protein that also has a higher level of the um, insulin-like insulin growth factors. And this factor, uh, IGF-1, because in a cow milk, they have this insulin-like growth factor for one. Uh, one is because a uh, baby cow, when they are born, they can stand right away and they fed with the, the cow milk from the mother, the mother cow, the pregnant cow, they can grow faster even a month. They can grow quite big, unlike the, ba um, the human baby. So as you are taking this dairy milk, it has estrogen hormone and it has um, IGF-1, and that really stimulates and promoting breast cancer cell. And this is the main reason for the cow milk is 
can does cancer unlike soy soy milk does not have all of the more later on sugar and refined carbohydrates sugar is an inflammatory food and increase your immune and that decrease your immune system just give people straight sugar and water without any other thing you can spy an inflammation within hours this is according to the study they have done a study to see that and a diet that is high uh, glucose level that spy the glucose such a high in just a short time that increase risk of the cancer and also in the more sugar you take the more calorie then of course obesity and overweight and those refined carbohydrates all the nutrient has been removed because it's so much refined so high in sugar low in fiber and no nutrients and this to me i really see high carbohydrate is wrong if people proclaim or they say they are a healthy eating i see a lot of people a lot of people are eating refined food even though they are not animal food so this is a quite important key for the overweight and obesity and cancer high sugar like uh, ice cream cake donut high sugar and animal fats food coloring see, is so beautiful you know we can learn from the, the nature sometimes when we go hiking and we see some mushrooms so beautiful or some berry is so colorful and usually they are deadly poisonous you see that the food in the market in the store you can look at it just that the donut it's so colorful it's so uh, attractive but they are quite deadly to your health. Soap drinks. Um, you see that the earlier we talked about water is important and we can see that people nowadays they are replacing water with a lot of soap drinks, especially in Asia. Now in Taiwan they have a lot of soap drinks. Everybody just have at least a cup of soap drink. If this is not soap drink, you can turn another way, say a uh, sweet beverage sweet drinks this is a problem soap drink now today we talked about is very acidic very acid for example coke or sprite or seven up it has phosphoric acid this acid is added to food to um to create a flavor and a nice texture of it so when you drink very acid soap drinks, what will happen to your body? It's so acid. Our body is a so God created our body in such an amazing way that when it's so much acid, such a you see that the sprite and coke is about three level three. So acid in such a way, then your body have to neutralize that by pulling your calcium, all the alkaline minerals, to neutralize this acidity in your blood. And what would that happen? that will definitely draw the calcium from your bones and we have a study uh, we will show it later but you just see that soap drink now only have this acidic problem causing bone fracture or osteoporosis the most important thing is another thing is that the, the sugar content in the soap drinks you see that um, the one big can, that, um, a one liter of Coca-Cola, there are uh, at least a hundred grams of sugar. You see, people say, oh, I don't eat sugar. Usually people say, oh, do not eat too much of sugar. People reply, I don't eat sugar. But you know that the hidden sugar in the drink or in your food that you cannot see, we don't see. There are so much sugar in it. There's a study done, and this is quite a new study. They found that the women in soap drink if they take two servings a day and that will make that with a week they will take 14 servings a week and that means a day is two serving and they will increase their um the hip fracture and the hip fracture what does that mean your bone is bone is just like so weak you know and break easily 20 percent increase risk of that so how much is two servings of soap drink a can a can of the soda drink usually about 375 that is already 2.5 so people or the young children young adults people who love to drink this usually have in the end of when they come to menopause they have osteoporosis problem 
Okay, another study, this is a very classic study done by Roma Linda. They found that um, just one liter of bottle of soda has more than 100 grams of sugar. Once you are taking this so much in this day, then your white blood cells, your immune system will be decreased 40% less and able to kill genes, bacteria, or even to fight the cancer. So, but you might think, oh, it might just just a short time. But do you know that you drink this much of sugar, taking in so much? Actually, it leaves at least up to five hours. Can you imagine a person who has a cancer or low immune system and continue to take those sugary drinks? That is even decrease much more of the immune system. And you cannot fight over with this cancer and fight other infection diseases. You know, and I come across just a few weeks ago that it's... Um, a case he did not sleep well he, he he was lack of sleep and a lot of stress and he he ate a lot of shoe a candy just say candy okay 20 candies and then he had a, a gum inflame inflammation and infections and he has that swollen just like grape size swelling and pain so what did he do he needed to come with a fast a fruit fast vegetable juice but because he cannot chew, so blame the, the, the fruits all in blender and then try to drink it. Having a, a short time fasting and then try to detox and eliminate all those sugar out and then to rebuild your immune system by taking hydrotherapy, eating the right food, no more sugar. And he recovered within like three or four days. All right, so you can see that the overweight or obesity was regarded as a symptom, only a symptom of a disease. But you know that now obesity and overweight is not a symptom, is a disease. This might be very hurtful for people who are overweight or obesity, yeah, but it's just the truth. And this, why is that the, the study define obesity, overweight as a disease? Because overweight and obesity is a, is one of the greatest risk factor for cancers, that 13 types of cancer, colon, pancreas, kidney, breast cancer, especially breast cancer after menopause, that will even increase breast cancer. All right. So your food choice are very important. And the lifestyle diseases. Now we are coming to the last part. I'm happy that I still have time. The lifestyle diseases like cancer, insomnia, depression, OCD, all those are called lifestyle diseases. Um, shouldn't be really treated with modern medicine because it's not really treating the root, the cause of the disease. Okay, so. And you see that cancer, like lung or breast cancer, breast cancer, they usually have a long latency of period, even um, in your body for more than 20 years. So it's not like that, okay, you were healthy, and one day you wake up and you say, oh, I got cancer. No, or you got this disease. No, you haven't been healthy, and you had a cancer growing in you for decades. Okay, I want you to think about it. This is very important. Okay, and they, they today we're talking about um, cancer, um, cancer causing food, and for the cancer, there are 10 hallmarks of the cancers that the cancer usually do in our body for the cells, you know, try in a, a destroy and damage our body. They have such a strong power. And they are drugs, they've been invented, try to combat and counter each hallmark of the cancer but you know for example chemotherapy even target of cell therapy they are only designed to target specific one can they deal with all the hallmarks and try to destroy all the work of the cancer no not really and usually they have a lot of side effects as a matter of fact no drug is able to target the whole mark and multiple hormones of the, um, the cancers at the same time. So that's why here now, I want everybody to have a very important concept and bear in mind, we're not talking about the supplements um, containing extracts. 
or purify um, phytochemicals because the drug is not able to deal and then target and then cure us with the cancer and fighting cancer. So now a lot of people, a lot of science, they are trying to bring in to find that what is in a plan, what can antioxidant, can we take it from the nutrient, from the plants, from the herb, and then to, to fight cancer or fight certain diseases. But here we're not talking about a certain supplements or a certain extract or phytochemical or antioxidants. Uh, we are talking about rather eating the whole plant foods themselves. You know that they, I wanted to share this important. The, this, this is a study that found that they take, uh, for example, curcumin from turmeric. This is a one after they take. So they are um, some phytochemical that are very important to fight cancer from turmeric, berry, uh, broccoli, each one of them. And they, they, um, they tested in a study individually to target cancer. It does not work effectively at all. But then when they come to a study that combine all those extracts from food, combine it together, do you know that is 80% effective to fight cancer? E to stop the can grow and to kill them. So I want you to bear in mind, this is a very important because I come a lot of people, they're asking about this. All right, God's diet, our creator's diet, what did he give it to us when he created us in Genesis? And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seeds, which is upon the face of the, all the the earth and in every tree, and which is the fruit of a tree eating seeds, to you it shall be your meat, it shall be your food, from Genesis 1.29. This is when God created uh, Adam and Eve, create beings uh, perfectly. God has order. When we go to, when they say, okay, let me buy you a lunch. And when we go and say, okay, let me order you this sandwich. Do you know that God created us? He do not let us to eat whatever we want. God say, I created you, all those environment, beautiful for you to enjoy. But now come to, at the very end, Genesis 129, God say, I order the food for you. I buy you, this is the food I want you to eat. And that is the herbs of bearing seed. And what are the herbs of bearing seeds? They are the, um, the, the plants that would bear a lot of seeds. They are the maize, that is corn, rice, all kind of grains that are, they are considered as grains or even beans and lagoons. Fruits of a tree that is and the, the nut shell, the, the, the kernel of the, the fruit usually comes with the nuts. So at the very be beginning, God gave us grains and lagoons and then fruits and nuts to eat and seeds. But when men sin, we are more poor and in potential to have a different kind of disease, even cancer. So God has given us in Genesis 3.18, the herbs of the field. The herbs of the field are the wild vegetable herbs and so-called that what nowadays we eat vegetable, we can buy in the market. And even you can grow your own. Those has a lot of antioxidant and phytochemical to help you to fight disease. You see that God does not give us specific food that you should only eat pineapple or you should only eat this curcumin no god give us diet a diet that we can enjoy and eat now let's find out god's diet is whole grain lagoons fruits vegetables nuts and seeds and um, my favorite book the ministry of healing in this book one of the sections it talked about grains and fruit nuts vegetable they are very good that is chosen order a meal a menu order chosen by our creator and those food we um, prepare in a simple way a natural manner as possible so we have to learn now we are learning about knowledge what food what food is good for us but we also need to learn how we can prepare them in a simple way so these come to cooking method or how we you eat them and how should we eat them in a natural way we must learn and this is 
end of learning, there are many ways to, to learn, but we need to be motivated, continue to strive for health. And those food impart strength and also, and also help our intellect. Okay, those are usually, you can see the vegan food um, pyramid. All right, so when we come to the healthy food, God's creator's diet, the five anti-cancer food groups, we can see as whole grains as a food group and lagoons, uh, plant-based protein, beans as another group, fruits, fruit group, nuts and seeds, those are the fat group and vegetable as a group. So remember, we are not talking about specific food. We are talking about a, a food group. We eat variety. And this, I want you to continue to stress about this because it is just important. So now let's come to the first one, the whole grains. The whole grain contains the entire grain and is made of the brain, germs, endosperm. But refined food only have the endosperm. And the brain and the germ are all removed. And actually, the most of the um, nutrients are in the but endosperm is only the calorie. And that's why people eating a lot of refined carbohydrates, refined grains. Ref refined grain can be made out of a whole bunch of different food, bread and buns, even crackers. They are all refined. And that's why they are um, really the cause of the problem for, for today. So when we talk about the whole grain, we can talk about the whole, the, the whole oats, brown rice, barley, whole wheat, quinoa, and millet. Buckwheat, whole grain corn, maize, those are so important. And those are rich in fiber and antioxidants. You know that the first Adventist Health study, they found that they, this is the first study in the world, they found that whole grain can reduce the cancer risk. Okay, as we can see, this is a brown rice, 95% um, uh, 55 in the germ and 40 in the, uh, the brain. They has a lot of nutrient, um, vitamin, um, vitamin B1, 2, all bunch of it, and protein and vitamin E. Okay, and they can fight cancer, remove the toxin. Okay, hold a lot of um, even trace mineral, and they are very important for your build up your immune system. Okay, we are going to go through because we don't have much time. Okay, so I want to come in for the Asia is white rice and then brown rice. So choose wisely for this. So when you cook your brown rice, you soak. Usually one cup of brown rice will go with two cups of water and then you let it set at least don't open up the lid at least let it set more than 30 minutes. I usually let it set even longer so that will dry it up so the the rice is, is not so wet. Sprouted brown rice or even sprouted grains they are very um, nutrients they increase um, higher nutritional and ox antioxidant value and that vitamin c and enzyme also also one of them and for people who have digestion problem or um, the gut problem sprouted grains are usually much easier for them to digest and absorb the nutrient are easier to absorb um i know that today the um, people of Africa and I in Kenya group I know that I want I have some Kenya friends and they love Ugali and they say that if they have if they leave you know, they if they are immigrant to US they miss Ugali it's not so easy for them to find um, the maize but when we so since uh, we have um, different people from different way of eating, so choose your grain, whole grains, and make sure your, your ugali is grain, corn, whole grain might eat instead of refined one. 
This is ugali, and I found that it's very interesting. Even they made ugali with sorghum. Sorghum is so good. And also red millet. See, we have different variety of grain to eat. And um, they, I come also, you know, some people, they will say that um, buckwheat is not good. Certain grain is not good. It's poison. It's not good a certain thing. But I would like to encourage everybody to look at this whole grain, the food that God has given to us, as the eat balance, balance eating, temperance eating, and eat variety. Um, I have a guest come to our house. She said, I cannot eat rice. I cannot eat brown rice. I said, oh, no brown rice? What about buckwheat? No, I cannot eat that because people told me that is toxic to my body. I said, no. So she eat with fear every day at the table. She is so afraid because she is very knowledgeable with those uh, pearls knowledge. She has been learning more than 10 years. But really, eat variety of food and not to eat with the fear. Because, and I share with her, if you are eating brown rice for breakfast only, no fruit, nothing, just brown rice and lunch, Nothing vegetable, just brown rice. And dinner, just brown rice, nothing else. And I eat every day, brown rice, brown rice, brown rice. I always say, yeah, that's a problem. Please not to eat that. That is not good. But if you eat once a day, and then the other day eat buckwheat, the other day eat uh, quinoa, then that's no problem. Please not to eat by your fear. Okay, being the guns. It is plant-based protein, and those are called in. Do you know that in the study, in the world study, do you know how how do they call plant-based protein? Do you know how they call bean? The excellent protein, better than other animal protein. They are excellent. They are cheap, and they are clean because they don't have hormone. They don't have. Um, antibiotics they don't have any other contamination and they are the beans actually they are the best blood thinner they are very good those fiber help you to fight cancer and also reduce your blood pressure and even better for your diabetes problem and people say oh if i don't eat animal food beef those red meat i don't have protein i need a lot of protein because the doctors tell them that you must eat a lot of red meat in order to have protein and iron but do you know that a soybean is the even much higher the, the protein is much higher than a beef and you can say that is a serving of soybean has the same serving protein of the beef so don't worry and relax eating god's food and three-fourths cup of cooked soybean. It has the same amount of protein found in cooked meat, chicken, or fish. And you know that some, uh, when I was in Philippines, people would tell me, oh, I eat healthy, I don't eat meat. I'm a vegetarian. But then later when I eat with them, they eat fish. Because they, you know, people's concept, they learn it differently. There are some people, they see fish, it's a vegetarian food, but it's not. And how do you categorize? How do you learn about this? And there's one thing that you can learn it fast. That is that food that is any food that has eyes, mouth, and can breathe. It is that they have eyes or mouth. They are not plant-based. They are not vegetarian. Okay, remember that. All right, and the study also found that 25 grams of the soy, be, uh, soy protein from the soy that can prevent, reduce heart diseases. I also have a lot of people that come and I heard them asking this question. Oh, so I cannot eat soybean because they are not good. They are toxic or they increase breast cancer, especially dealing with those breast cancer survival, even people with high risk of breast cancer they do not like to eat soybean but i want to tell you you know that according to the research there is no problem and this is telling you about scientific evidence but do you know that god is so wise we have to use a scientific to prove god is right but god is right at the very beginning food eat variety of soybean variety 
because even soybean has black one, even has brown one, even yellow one. Different variety and different kinds. Who are safe? Safe. They are safe. I fiber and to help you to fight cancer. So be aware of it and remember that. And there's one study, a lot of studies have found that high intake of soy can reduce the breast cancer risk. Even those people who have breast cancer even can lower their mortality rate, dying from cancer, breast cancer. Okay. Okay, I'll we'll skip this. Fruits. Fruits has antioxidants, lots of phytochemicals, and they help prevent cancer. They even have a lot of fiber, even like the vegetables, all of those has a lot of fiber. And do you know your gut? People say, oh, I need to eat yogurt because it's a probiotic food. It's good for my gut. Yeah, that's true, but soy yogurt is better. But do you know that fiber is so important? Now, we say that probiotic is important for our food, good for the, the gut health. But you need to, um, for the gut, uh, the microbiome, the gut bacteria, the good gut bacteria that in your gut, they need to eat food. And what kind of food do they love? They love fibers, especially from your whole plain food. They love them. If you don't eat them, they decay, they are sick, and they are weak. And that's why your immune system is very weak. Okay, now let's go to the next one. Blueberry. So I'm, t okay, here I'm talking about blueberry in among the fruits. I'm not saying that every day you should eat blueberry because in, perhaps in Africa, even in Taiwan, to find blueberry is not so easy. Even though I'm trying to learn how to grow berry, I'm not yet at that stage, but I need to learn. Some fruit, this is the, according to the, the study, they found that the berries, whole kind of berry, like blueberry, blackberry, raspberry, almond berry, they have um, a special antioxidants that make, that is the one that makes the, um, um, the fruit, the berry, the, the blueberry, blue, the purple color, okay? So this will fight cancer. But what about those people who are not, who don't live in a country that don't have blueberry? Then eat other fruit. Do not think about, oh, I don't have berry, I cannot fight cancer. This is just one of them. I'm taking it out for an example. What about eggplant? Eggplant has, eggplant outside, you know, the, the skin is purple. The same. But do you know that I have a guest come to our house and pass our garden? And then she say, do not, I don't want to eat it because it's to my body and it is not good for my body. No, if you eat a lunch and dinner five days a year, I say, yeah, do not eat. But if you eat it, once a while variety once in two in once in a month two times in a month change different variety different color of food that is a key okay citrus citrus like lemon lime all kind of grapefruit they all can help reducing cancer and especially like they found that you reduce the stomach cancer by 28 percent and those have a lot of vitamin c help to boost your immune system they are good even like lemon and guava, there are more. I'm just taking here an example. In your country, in your location, eat variety of fruits, okay? So fruit, we should eat at least two servings a day, and variety, eat different color. Do not eat oranges. Eat, try to eat as many variety as possible. Two servings a day, actually a serving is just like your a fist a day and if you more if you're eating a whole plant-based diet you're following god's instruction of the eating more than two serving to me is no problem because i eat more than that but of course there are some cases that severe cancer you have to be careful what kind of food you are giving to them but majority no problem at all vegetable it has vitamin minimal phytochemical to remember after mincing god has given us the herbs of the field vegetable because it has a lot of phytochemicals and fiber to help us to fight cancer. Especially cruciferous vegetable, 
dark green vegetable they are so good kale bai chai cabbage even purple cabbage all of them but do you know that i want to share with you you know i grow my own garden those dark green vegetables especially cruciferous greens they have a lot of worms so i realized wow before i eat the uh, those dark green cruciferous greens from the market they have a lot of pesticides so please Learn to grow your own food, own greens. You will eat with peace and you will enjoy the taste even more. Okay. Onion, they are very good. Natural oxen, uh, antibiotics. Good for the flavors, sweeten, you know, bring the flavor to your food and your soup, your stew, go with the beans. Um, garlic, also are very good um, antibiotics. And then help um, also fight cancer and put up your immune system especially during this COVID-19 um, pandemic garlic even eat a uh, raw or cook um, vegetable now we come to the, the some important uh, principle eat at least three servings of a day and eat variety of vegetable eat rainbow different color you can eat it raw and eat it cook, but every day in my lunch meal, I must have a raw salad and I have some cooked vegetables like carrots or onion, garlic, and I cook with other food. Eat it this way, okay? Nuts and seeds. They are very good fats, omega-3, omega-6, and the Adventist Health Study is the first study tell the whole world that God has given us nuts. And if we eat five or more times per week, they show they reduce heart disease. So eat five times or more. So eat daily. Um, how do you eat nuts? Let me see. I will talk about it later. One, okay, flax seed, it has a lot of uh, omega-3. They're also very good. So the study have found it protect the breast cancer and also reduce the, um, the, it will help to reduce the growth and the spread of cancer cells for breast cancer and prostate cancer. So if you can eat one to three tablespoon, one or two, ground it. If you eat directly, you are not able to um, absorb because your teeth is not that sharp to grind it into powder form so grind it but how do you eat that usually for the flax seed i grind it when i wait and fresh because omega-3 is very sensitive to heat temperature and also oxygen so make sure you eat it i usually eat it raw and i grind it and sprinkle on my food right away i don't grind and then um, i don't buy those grind flax seed that usually they are really not so good now Okay, olive oil we have yesterday. Uh, Mrs. Joanna Kim has shared with the uh, the goodness of olive oil, and they are very good for digestive system. Um, for one thing, I wanted to share with the extra olive oil. Um, Mrs. Joanna Kim also mentioned I the dark bottle because uh, those mano um, saturated fatty acid they are very sensitive to um, the light. And also the um, the color. I mean the, the light and also the heat. So make sure the color it is uh, a darker a dark color bottle. But also it's, it's very important. I learned that to buy the old oil, extra virgin oil that has a label with the harvest state. Usually people just say expiration date, but I make sure the olive oil I have the harvest state stem on top of it because I can be sure this olive oil is quite it's just made it within a very short time okay omega-3 in can found in not only flexi chia seed but also how do you call this avocado and walnut they are very important for you almond also excellent for the heart disease as we have shared fiber and actually, I should uh, give you some picture of the food that is cooked next time. So, 
three meals a day if you can eat two that is great but depends on your work and your job okay breakfast like a king lunch like a queen and dinner like a beggar and make sure that's the way I eat the breakfast I usually have a whole grain I have a bean I have a protein bean or I have a C I definitely have a C and a fruit I eat fruit in the morning for lunch I definitely have a roll salad that's a must roll salad or sprouts beans and green leafy vegetable dark green okay either they are cooked or they are raw I must have them especially for the cancer or different disease they must have that there's a very good even heart disease you know the um, vessel problem whole grain and I have my main carbohydrate whole grain beans and also nuts how do we eat nuts you only eat um, a serving that you have one serving of seeds a serving is probably one tablespoon of seed would do for lunch for nuts you can have one serving or you can the way you do is that you put the nuts in your hand in your palm and cover that nuts without seeing the nuts that is how much you eat because people usually eat a nut the whole eat they eat a lot of them and i eat it raw nuts if you roast it or add it with salt and different flavor you tend to eat the whole bag instead of, so i would just um have the nuts in my palm and close it cover it up without seeing a nut and that's the portion i should eat so what i mean by this is that nuts should be eat not as much as we wanted to eat, but sparely. Okay. Dinner, easy digestion. That's the most important. Either fruit or vegetable or easy digestion. Okay. So with the nutrient, the whole plant-based food, healthy food or vegetarian food are quite different. Those are quite different. I mix with vegetarian food as a whole healthy food. Now, as we come to the healthy food, we are talking about choosing quality foods. Because I have seen that a lot of vegan or vegetarian um, eater, the quality of food and the way they cook, what kind of, are they choosing a whole grain or refined grain? That's a, a, a issue. So we talked about whole plant-based food and um, healthy food, quality food, choose variety and variety, not just one kind of food all the time and your cooking method is very important steam stew you cook them you bake them those are great and regular meal between a five to six hours in between each meal that is great for your digestion and allow your stomach to rest and you have three meals a day or two meals no snacking and not try to avoid stimulant food Okay, reminder, I'm coming to the end. You might overwhelm with so much information. If this is your first time, please not to worry. I just hope that this lecture will inspire you to learn more and even to um, research more and then to be with a friend, a healthy friend, you know, health conscious people and then to learn it together. It's just only to inspire you but not to overwhelm you. There are so many behavior we need to change but not to crush you. Take one step at a time. And I want you to remember to carry away is that no need to load up or avoid a single food. Eat variety, okay? And diversity in different color, but make sure it's whole plant-based food. And not to eat with fear because I have seen people, they have very good food, but they are so fearful and stressed about, is this good for me? Is this not good for me? And am I eating enough? Because health is not just about diet. Health is not just about food. I have seen people, they practice well with water, exercise, diet, everything. But they have so much fear. They cannot trust God. The creator God that given to all of them, goodness to them. They cannot really relax, enjoy, um, enjoy God's presence. You cannot really enjoy that health that God want to give it to you. So, um, an anti-cancer diet is not all or nothing. And the more you work toward it, the better. And today is a day to choose and a day to change. There are many things, but take one at a time or two. You have friends to help you and try to seek information. 
and yeah that's about it for my presentation there's more to share but i think that's enough for today thank you very, much. You very much would you, would you, uh, would, you uh, would you please pray, pray, for, pray us? for us yes dear Heavenly father we just thank you so much thank you for you have given us the right and good diet for our health and as we learn so much like this morning, different um, health facts and knowledge, what to eat and what not to eat. We might have friends here, it might be overwhelming, and might be feeling like, what am I going to do? But God help us to trust and to take your words, your words, that the food that are good for us. Take your word by faith. For your word is the life. And as we eat your words and taking the food, following your instruction, taking food to our body, you will impart the life to us. And help us to repent. If today during this um, lecture we have found that, oh, I have invited, I have done something that is not good. God, you are a merciful, forgiving God. As we are waiting to confess and to turn, God, you accept us and you will help us to regain health. But not only so, help us, each one of us, to share this with the friend we love and family. In Jesus' name I pray. But most important, you are a God of impossible. You can help us. With man cannot change, but God, you can. Thank you for being a God of impossibility and a God that can help us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Very much. Very much. Uh, Dr. Wu, would you please stop?